Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Simbidium season has started already in my garden and I am so very excited about it. They are not in full bloom, of course. However, I am very happy to see that I already have several spikes on some of my Simbidium. I have them at different stages of development and um, I also already have the first blooms although just one spike. We will see that in a minute. My Cymbidium do not all bloom at the same time, which is a good thing because that way I will have Cymbidium blooms till June next year, especially because uh, all the blooms, uh, they last for so long. Uh, that is, if all goes according to schedule. Presently, I have a total of 10 pots with Cymbidium plants. They are planted in uh, plastic pots, which I have placed inside larger terracotta pots. I have um, organized them that way because I had uh, those terracotta pots already. And um, then I realized they could be very useful to give height to the cymbidium. Otherwise, their long leaves would be touching the, the floor. Besides, the outer pots avoid direct sun heating too much the root balls. So, why have them in plastic pots if I have the terracotta ones, would you ask? The thing is, Cymbidium like to be snug in their pots and therefore the terracotta pots would be too large for them. On the other hand, the plastic pots hold the moisture for longer and I don't have to be watering them all the time. My cymbidium are hybrids and most of the species used in their makeup are semi-terrestrials and I took that into consideration when making the substrate for them. It must hold enough um, moisture but still have good drainage. All of the uh, cymbidiums I have were reported last spring and uh, for making my substrate I used whatever I had at my disposal at uh, different timings. I used bark, perlite or lacquer beads or gravel or bonsai substrate. And then uh, I added uh, mulch made, I made from leaves and also peat. And uh, I even add some uh, potting soil sometimes, although I don't remember if I did it last time. All these uh, add um, consistency and moisture to the whole thing. My cymbidium live under the roof of this porch all year round. They are protected from uh, winter rain and uh, they get afternoon sun after 4 o'clock till sunset. This time of the year, mid-September, my temperatures are still summer-like, which in my case is not really hot. And um, they are around 25 Celsius during the day and from 17 to 19 Celsius at night. Usually our summer-like temperatures go till the end of October. During winter, mostly uh, December and January, which are the cooler months, days can get as uh, cool as 12 Celsius during the day and 5 Celsius at night. It is important to note that cymbidium do need the temperature fluctuation, not only during winter, but also during summer, with the cooling at night. That said, let's take a look and see what's going on. One thing you will notice, the leaves might have some dust. I just cannot keep them clean anymore. Sand in the air has become sort of a permanent thing this year around here. I mean, for the past five months, we are getting a lot of sand from the Sahara Desert in North Africa, which is south from here. And uh, you may notice some drops of birds on some of the leaves. <laughs> no matter how fast I clean them, I get new ones every morning from the birds. They sleep perched on the beams of the roof of this porch. So I decided I'm not going to be too particular about, uh, about this matter anymore. Anyway, 
Another thing with the leaves, some of them have brown tips. I cannot say it is from lack of humidity because in fact my summer is humid enough. I don't think it is a fungus issue either, at least not all of the brown tips. What I believe it is, it's the wind. The leaves are shaking and swinging all the time because this is a windy place. They bang into each other all the time. The wind does not seem to affect blooming and that it is what really matters. So let's take a look. Starting with this one, which as you can see is a huge plant. It bloomed with uh, 12 or 13 spikes two years ago uh, with many, many blooms on each spike. Uh, these blooms are sort of small and uh, numerous. But this plant did not bloom last year. I don't know why. I hope it blooms this year. No spikes yet so far, but it's still early for it considering this is a February bloomer. This one here is the, my most recent cymbidium. It should be blooming in January. So it's still early for spikes, but um, it sure it will be a good thing uh, to see those blooms again. This one is usually the first one to bloom. And um, it hasn't so far, and I just noticed there's one spike already. I'm happy about it. Usually it blooms with two spikes, this plant. This one, I'm so very happy to see the spikes because it hasn't bloomed in a couple of years after I divided it. One spike here, another two here. There's two different plants here. This one has not bloomed for the past couple of years either. Let's see what it can do this year. If it does not spike this year, and if I can find a nice new symbidium to put in this place, I may try an experiment with this one and I will plant it on the ground in the garden. On this table I have another one but before looking at it let me show you this gorgeous clivia which was a gift from my friend Olga in Greece. I've never seen this species on sale around here. Usually we, what we see is uh, the smaller species uh, Cliva miniata. This is Cliva gardneri, which is a much larger species. In the meantime, I lost my miniata, but I did not buy a replacement as there isn't space for all plants. And I'm quite happy with this one too. This is getting huge and uh, it looks quite happy, not only blooming, but also forming pups. One on this side and two more here. Clivias are stunning. They are rhizomatous plants. They have thick branching roots, just like cymbidium. Reason why I use the same kind of media for them. Of all my cymbidium, this is the one that blooms the latest. This is the one that closes up the season. So, too early for spikes for this one but she has very vigorous new growth. And then here, this is a very reliable cymbidium. Not as vigorous as some, but performing beautifully as always. Last year it was one of the first to start the season and it stayed in bloom right to the end. The color of the blooms is very striking, a very bright orange, and the flowers are also fragrant. And look at the number of spikes. Let's see. Oh my goodness. One. There's one here. This is the largest of them. And then there's one here. Two. Three. Four. 
Ten, eleven. Each time I look, I see a different another one. <laughs> oh my goodness! Fabulous, fabulous. This is fabulous plant, and it's not even one of the most luxuriant. It's not one of the largest, but I love it. <laughs> so happy! Soon we'll have blooms from this one. You see the, the little buds are coming out already on these ones. And this one too. Let's see. This one has grown like crazy since I repotted it in the spring. I cannot even count the number of new growths. So far it only has two spikes though. But maybe it can throw more later or then reserve itself for next year. The good thing about cymbidium is that very often they bloom on the spikes from previous years, reason why they bloom so profusely in some years. Next one, this is quite large plant. It has grown quite well lately. There's something here. I'm not sure what it is. Still too early, but it could be a new growth. I think it feels a bit too solid for a spike. But we shall see in a few days. I wouldn't be surprised if it were another new growth. And maybe the spikes will come later in the season. last one is the one in bloom. This is always the first to bloom, maybe because um, it is um, the one that gets more direct sun, both from south and west, much longer than the others. Or maybe because it's just an early bloomer. There's another spike here. Wait, can you hear the thunder? The day is quite warm. It was sunny just half an hour ago and then it started to get cloudish. It seems it's going to rain and that will be nice. If it, it, it rained quite a bit last week. But uh, it has been sunny since then. More rain would be nice since we are in severe drought. It did not rain when it was supposed to, that is last winter. Our rivers are dry and um, as we depend on the dams for making electricity, the lack of rain is becoming very problematic around here. Not only in Portugal, but all over Europe. So, although for some of you it may seem dark, this rain for us is precious, <laughs> like liquid gold, as they say. And on a wet but happy note, I'm finishing this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. Next video will be about vandas and herbaceous, um, unless the orchids I ordered arrive first, and then we will have an unboxing video. <laughs> Whichever! It is. I hope to see you there. See you soon.